Dana Perino was on Fox talking about uh, you know the the death uh, or the murder suicide of the NFL player, and uh, she talks about domestic violence, how women can protect themselves, and the decisions that women make when they find themselves in domestic disputes. Let's take a look. Own a gun. Listen, right. Can you name me one person you know that saved their lives by a handgun? Uh, there's millions that saved their lives. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, how's this? I know many, many people I who do. saved their own property because they had a handgun. A lot of them are in Florida right now. People have started to, to, to but I rob them, but also, take, but go, break into the house. I got a gun. Bob, I think that is actually, I, I, skirt, I think it skirts the issue that women are victims of violence all the time. Should have guns. Could, well, maybe that, may, or make better decisions. Or, no, protect, learn to protect themselves. Guns, guns are for people to even the score against somebody who is larger or more powerful than you are. Who doesn't need a gun more than a young woman walking home at night? They should have permits to carry. By the way, I want to go back to like people who have permits to carry, and do they do they end up abusing the law? According to in the Florida records, 100, they issued 1.36 million permits. Only 165 were revoked. And the Texas violent crime rate dropped 20 percent and homicide 31 percent since enactment of the 96 carry law. So several things out of that. Uh, number one, I love that Bob Beckel said name one guy. <laughs> and he, of course, uh, millions. Bowling couldn't do it. He was like, millions upon millions. Yeah, that's it. And then I personally know many, many guys who defended their property in Florida. <laughs> And still couldn't name one person. Some of my best friends are property defenders. <laughs> yeah. Some of my best friends save their lives with guns. Now look, are there people who have saved their life with a gun? Of course there are. And they, they, so you could name a couple of names. Are there a lot more people who died uh, because of gunfire uh, when they thought they were going to protect themselves that accidentally shot a family member or purposely shot a family member when they were angry, when they yeah. wouldn't have, etc. There, now, that is actually millions and millions, right? And we covered on this, on this show all the time, Javon Belcher is one of them. If he got angry, if he didn't have a gun, he might not have necessarily killed his girlfriend, but he did, and then he killed himself. And I can name you many names as yeah. we have. And every time we name a name, they say, not now, not now, you're politicizing, don't do it, right? So that's point number one. Point number two is, Greg Gutfeld makes the same point as the head of the NRA just did about Bob Costa's point, mm -hmm. carry guns. Yeah. If only she had had a gun. Here is his exact quote, and this is from Wayne LaPierre, uh, the CEO of the NRA. He says, the one thing missing in that equation is that woman owning a gun so she could have saved her life from that murderer. Yeah, with a three-month-old around, it would have been great if they were both packing heat. Because once the bullets started flying, I'm sure everybody would have been fine, mm -hmm. right? By the way, it turns out Javon Belcher had eight guns. So if she had a gun and he had eight guns, it would have been a minor miracle if the baby didn't also get killed. Also, we don't know how the murder-suicide went down exactly. Like, did he gang up on her? Did he just pull? I mean, you're assuming that if she did have a gun, that she would have it on her at all times. So if he posed a threat, she could immediately pull it out and shoot him. But it, it's but not. But if she has a gun at her all times and she's got a three-month-old that she's breastfeeding, it is far more likely that she will accidentally shoot the baby. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So or if or if she's being safe and she's got it locked up in a safe, she's like, oh, Javon, I understand you're really angry and just pulled a gun on me. Can you hold on a second while I go unlock the safe? Yeah. Right. Uh, and by the way, to Bob Costas's point. Um, I understand what he was saying, and, and people will oftentimes make the argument that, well, if he really wanted to kill her, he could easily kill her with a knife or something else, which is true. But nothing makes a murder-suicide easier than a gun. Because a lot of people who are considering it worry about the pain if they were to uh, attack someone and then attack themselves with a gun. You, you're not going to do a murder-suicide with a knife. Or if you do, it's far less likely that that'll be happen. Yeah, that'll happen. I don't even want to have the debate. No, it's I so know. silly. It's people who love their guns, who don't want to let their guns go. And that's a fine point. But then they turn around and make absurd points. There aren't drive-by stabbings. OK. Of, of course the weapon makes it easier. Of course a more efficient weapon will make more efficient killings and more killings. Of course. OK. So then Dana Perino obviously suggests that, hey, you know, women should protect themselves a little bit better, uh, or shouldn't get themselves in dangerous situations, seems to be blaming the victim. Is that really harsh? Or what do you think? Are you going to give her a pass? She didn't quite mean it that way. I. I 
I'm going to give her a pass because I don't think that she meant it in the way that it came out, uh, especially because she has a bunch of people talking over her. So you, I mean, you saw how it worked. Like she couldn't really elaborate on what she was saying. So it's really hard to judge her. There was some validity in what she was saying because in some cases women do make dumb decisions, right? So Rihanna is a perfect example of that. I know that, you know, she, she's the best example because she's public and everyone knows the story. And she has money. She has all the resources that she needs. She's not dependent on Chris Brown. Therefore, if she wanted to leave him, she could easily do so. But I think that you can't make these uh, gross generalizations about women who are uh, victims of domestic abuse, especially because there are lots of women that uh, decided that they wanted to stay home and take care of their children. And if their husbands beat them, they have no financial means to leave them. Right. Okay, and also they they can suffer uh, psychological consequences as a result of that abuse. So they're not in the right state of mind in order to make the right decisions. But I think both sides have decent points. Look, uh, you know, you can't blame the victim. That's obviously ridiculous. But at the same time, like you've got a, you're dating a guy who has these temper tantrums, is, has some history of of being unstable, and has eight guns in the house. Do yourself a favor, you know. Move out, you'll find, you know, everything's going to be okay. Yeah, I know you got a three month old. I know it's super hard, and I'm not putting it on you. It's the guy's fault, right? But just think about it. Sometimes they don't, they're, that instability that, that the eight guns is a clue. Sometimes it helps you if you pick up that clue. Well, I think that stories like that also highlight the necessity of women's shelters and certain social services that help women out when they are victims of domestic abuse because it gives them a place to go to for that transition. Because a lot of times women want to make the right decision, but they feel like they can't because they'll end up on the streets with their kids.